Hello, um, again, like the last video, I've just kind of jumped into recording. Uh, I've had a nice lunch, that is, like, I'm recording this right after lunch. And there's a few things that, about this video, that I kind of need to talk to you about. First of all, there's been a change of plans, quite a big change of plans, and this video is going to be the last video that I make of this series. So don't worry, there'll be more videos, if everything goes to plan. But of this series, this should be the last video. And here's why. Some of the things that I talked about in some of the previous episodes, they've been a bit advanced for what I've been planning in this series. And unfortunately, that means that the series is coming to an end. I'm going to have to stop it quite soon. Um, luckily, though, I'm going to start talking about ROM. And I'm going to explain the beginning of, in the beginning of this episode, um, I'm going to explain ROM. ROM. Uh, that's good because it isn't a very in-depth topic as far as the user input goes. Program memory, perhaps a little different, but we'll discuss that in a minute. The second thing I wanted to quickly say is that there's going to be another series, like I said. There will be more series after this, so you better look out for that. There will be a few clues um, within this PowerPoint or within whatever I say. So yeah, make sure you look out for those series. So ROM. ROM stands for read only memory. This kind of memory is similar to RAM in the sense that it can store data that needs processing and that we can read the data when we need it. The only difference is that the part that says read only. This doesn't mean we can't write to the memory, it means the computer itself can't write to the memory. The user can input into ROM, the user can write to the memory, like if, if, if the user wants to add 5 and 3, he can enter 5 and enter 3. But the only difference between ROM and RAM is that the computer can't store it there for him. So this is where ROM is basically where the user says, okay, I want to enter this, this number and this number, and this is what I want to do with it. He's going to enter an instruction and some data. So that's the part of the computer that's going to tell the computer what to do. Uh, the part of the ROM um, is called program ROM or PROM, P-ROM. And yeah, it's basically the instruction part of ROM. Okay, so like I said, program PROM is program ROM. And this tells the computer what to do with the information that it's given. I've actually made a mistake here. I said in modern computers, the PROM is both built into the computer and partially stored in the RAM. That's not true. That is a Newman, a von Neumann architecture. The the architecture that modern computers use is a bit different. Um, again, the main difference is that you can't store pro you can't store the program in the RAM. It's only in the ROM. So this is called a Harvard architecture, and it basically says that there's a different there's a somewhere to store the information, the data, and then there's somewhere to store the um, the information telling you the instructions. So the instruction and data have different locations where they'll be stored. This kind of becomes a bit more complicated when you're building your own computer. So um, like I said at the beginning of this series, I didn't really want it to be at the level that I'm explaining. Um, so in the program memory, in the PROM, there are many lines of program called code. Just like the data in a computer, the instructions in the program, the code, are written in binary code out of ones and zeros. The layout of bits in the PROM are arranged so that the lines of code are lined up with the instructions that are to be executed. Now what this means, wherever you see a 1 before an instruction, you're going to do that instruction. Wherever you see a 0 in front of an instruction, you're not going to do that instruction. So let's go back to our famous example 5 plus 3. What do we want to do? We want to read a 5 and we want to read a 3 and we want to add the numbers, right? But so we're going to have a 1 in read 5, 1 in read 3, and 1 in the add operation for the ALU. So we're going to do all those things. and But we're not going to have a 1 in something like increment, which will be add 1. If we have another function in the ALU that says increment, and we have a 1, it means we're going to execute that. No, we don't want to do that. We want to have it as 0. So this might still confuse you a little bit, and as always, it's going to be explained with some real PROM that I have waiting in Minecraft.
Okay, so I managed to hit record on Minecraft this time. Excellent. Right, so what are we doing? We're doing... Well, what are we doing? I, th I think we're going to do program memory, you know? That's, that's what I said we're doing, so why not? Now, we have a set of instructions here, um, known as an instruction set. It's quite a basic instruction set, and here's the instructions that we can do. We can read f value A. Now, I'll explain what that is in a minute. I'm just going to list out the instructions. We can read value A, we can read value B, we can read value C, we can save as value C, we can perform an addition operation by the ALU, and we can output if we're being if if we're reading from value C. So if if um if this if this command is on, if we're reading from C, and this command is on, then we can output whatever we're reading from C. So let's explain this a bit. Let's say we want to add two numbers, five and three. You wouldn't have guessed. So yeah, let's say we want to add those numbers. What's the first thing we're going to do? Let well, first of all, let's say that five is stored in value A, three is stored in value B, and there's nothing in value C. So we're going to want to get the five and the three out of uh, out of memory so that we can add them in the ALU. So the first thing we're going to do, we're going to get the five and three out of memory. We're going to read value A. We're going to read the five, and we're going to read value B. We're going to read the three. Now. The reason these commands aren't being executed is because the line of code that we're currently on isn't is is being disabled by by this lever here. It's being disabled, so these torches are being disabled. As soon as we stop disabling the line of code, it el it enables these torches to do what they're told, and we can have ones where we want to execute a, a command, and we can have zeros where we don't want to execute a command. So right now we want to get these two numbers, but we don't want to get this number. We don't want to save as this number, we don't want to add, and we don't want to output whatever is being read from C. So that's our program so far. But how is just going to have two numbers together? How is this going to add them? Well, it won't. It won't add them. If we just read the numbers, they're going to mix up and the computer is going to get confused. So what we need to do is we need to read both of the numbers, and we need to perform an addition operation to tell, to tell the computer that the user wants to add whatever's in value A and value B. So, when the program is executed, we are going to do an addition operation by the ALU. So now if we execute our program, if we if we disable enable this line of code, then on this line of code, we are going to read from value A, read from value B, and we're going to do an ALU arithmetic, so we're going to add whatever numbers are in A and B and I've already said that those are 5 and 3. So we're going to add 5 and 3. Now, if that's all we have, then that's great. We've got the right answer. But how is it going to get to the user? Well, what we could do is we could output it to the user. But the only way that we can output in this specific computer is we need to read from value C. So, OK, OK, OK. First of all, we need to save to value C to make to put our answer in there. So what we'll do is we'll save the ALU output to value C. Now we've added these two numbers, five and three, with uh, we've specified that we want to add them with this, and now we're saving the ALU output, so whatever the addition output will be, we're saving that into value C. Now Here's what would happen if we decide to read from value C on the same line of code. What it will do, the computer will add these two numbers, the ALU arithmetic will still be on, so it will save to value C, it will add 5 and 3, save the 8 into value C, but it's also reading from value C, so it will read the 8 back out and it will try and add it to these two numbers, so you'll get 8 add 8. And then that value is going to save into value C and it's going to repeat again. So that's a problem. We just get into a big loop. The way we do this is we say, okay, let's go to, let's say this is um, a little thing that tells us to go to the next line of code. And we want to say, okay, we want to go to this line of code. And maybe this line of code tells us, um, this command tells you go to this line of code. So now we're on this line of code. This will be the second line of code. So after this is executed, all these functions will happen, 
in addition to this function which and this function tells us that when this when this line of code is fit, completed then it's going to go to this line of code so after this line of code due to that little torch there we're going to jump to this line of code now in this line of code because we already have something saved in value c we can read it out of c and now we can send it to the alu output so we can we can send it to the user output so that's how we get our output from this except after this line of code is completed then here's what it will do it's going to jump back to this line of code because that's the way that decoders work a line of code starts on line 0 so this isn't the first line of code well it is but it's defined as line 0 this is line 1 and if we want to keep it on line one, we need to enter a one to say, okay, after this code line of code is completed, we want to keep it on this line of code so that it doesn't try to do the whole process again. And that's our program. So let's see what we're going to do. We're going to start up this line of code, and we're going to read from value A, read from value B. We are going to add those two numbers, and whatever we get out from the addition, we're going to save as value C. But after this line of code has finished executing, after all that's happened, after we've got a value in uh, in value C, we're going to move to this line of code. So it's finished. We're going to move to this line of code. Now we've got an 8 in value C, and we're going to read it out. And whatever we read, we're going to send to that to the user output, so that the user can get the value they want, and they'll be happy but we don't want it to repeat and therefore we need to have the this command on here which will tell us to stay on the line of code we're on and it also say that the program is finished maybe this this command over here says the program is finished so this will tell the user that the program is finished and there you go there's our completed program so we'll head back into powerpoint right now and we'll continue there okay so i hope that made some sense to you the idea behind a computer, as I explained really early on, probably in like the basic, 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 like, videos, the idea of a computer is to process information. That's actually the definition of a computer, something that processes information. You are a computer. That is, you can look at something and you can say, oh, it's a television. You've looked at the television, the light that goes to your eyes that allows you to perceive the television and then you understand that it's a television you've processed that light information into understanding what it actually is so that's a computer anything that can process information for that we need to know what to process and how we're going to do it the model that you see below shows all the parts of a CPU the PROM controls it all this decides what to do and when to do it you might not understand how all the how the computer works exactly from this model although the only thing that you need to know to understand it is that the what the computer can do so if it has a specific instruction set you need to know what it can do if it can do subtraction if it's capable of multiplying numbers you need to know what the computer actually is physically capable of doing once you know that and you understood what i said in the last um the last snippet of education then you're going to understand this whole CPU idea because of this I'm not going to explain in this episode like the um, how to how to properly program a CPU uh, and I'm gonna leave it for the next series and that's the first clue that came up in this in this um, episode for what the next series is going to be so I'm gonna leave you to figure that out but yeah so that model that you see below you is telling you that there's some form of memory that is going into the CPU. Now the CPU is made up of ALU registers and a control unit. And the user can input into that, into that big block. And he can also get an output based on what he inputs. Or she, or she, not to be sexist, sorry. Um, and also you can store it in memory in case the user decides that they want to get it out some other time and they don't want it right away. So yeah, this is the end, um, the end of the series. 
I really hope I've done a good job, um, both at giving you clues for what the next series is going to be about and also educating you about really what I wanted to talk about in this series. I'm not going to be going over it all, I've got videos for that. Um, literally I've recorded a whole series of videos explaining everything, so I'm not going to make an overview really, but we did computing, that's computing at a basic level, and in the next series, oh well I won't tell you what that's going to be about because I've left you clues already. So I hope you're going to enjoy this next series I'm planning on, but more importantly, I hope you learn from it.